How are you? I'm all right. What's all this about then? I'm speaking today. Are you? Yeah. Oh, you're very excited. Yeah. They won't let. I don't think. Bigger. What are you doing here? This is a town hall. My this goodness is the me! This a town hall, and because it's a town hall, taking part in our democratic rights to actually put the views of the people to the Wiltshire Strategic Planning Committee. This is quite a week for views of the people, isn't it? Nationally, <laughs> I mean, we've just had a a debunking or a coup of our Prime Minister, whether you like him or not. Well, exactly. But our whole society depends on the people having a say. And when you have 2,800 people against the incinerator, 19 local authorities, parishes, villages against it, the will of the people has to prevail. And what I'm really concerned about is I'm hearing rumours that the committee will be frightened to turn down this application because They've been threatened that the costs may fall on Wiltshire Council if the planning inspector then decides to pass it. But that's an abdication of responsibility and that's a terrible thing for democracy. If we're going to be governed by the accountants and the cost, then what's the point? Where do we stand? And we've only got to look around the world to see what happens when process takes precedence over people. That's a great worry. And we know what we have in this country is wonderful. But so I, I, as, as I understand it, what you're saying is there is a democratic side to this that's being overlooked. Well, there is, and that to me is the core of our democracy. You know, I refer back to the Minister of State when he decided not to make a decision. He didn't say send it back to the officers. He didn't say send it back to the council. He said send it back to the local community. He didn't even say send it back to the committee. And the local community is not us, it's not me, it's the elected representatives in there on the planning committee. And if they are going to listen to the will of the people in any democracy, then they have to turn this down. You know, it comes from the Minister of State. Let, it, let the local community decide. Well, nobody can be in any doubts what the local community want. Mm. And that has to prevail. Because if it doesn't, all we hold dear is in peril. Mm. So what we're saying about this incinerator is that it's, it could be, and we don't know yet, but it could be in some way carcinomic, a bit like uh, Lafarge, where they were, you know, there were some pretty doubtful things going on there. Well, I would say it's, it's not just the carcinogenic threat. I would just refer to last week, 61 houses burnt to the ground, 1,400 hectares of land destroyed transport system come to a halt, people dying unnecessarily, tarmac melting on the roads. Why would anybody want this now? And what hills are portraying this is some sort of answer to the planet's problems. What I want to get across to people, this is not the answer. This is the cause of the planet's problems. This is not recycling. This is a burning, burying, belching plant that either buries waste in the ground for future generations to dig up pumps it into the atmosphere for us to breathe and it doesn't recycle it it puts it in containers and sends it across to poor countries where they pick out a couple of bits and left leave the rubbish strewn across the land so we need to kill this myth this is not an answer to society's problems this is the cause of it mm. and that's why this has to be turned down on moral grounds alone mm. yeah and um, why Westbury why Westbury because Westbury seems to me such a beautiful little place um, it was only marred by the big smoking chimneys a few years ago, which have now gone. So you would expect the air quality in Westbury to be better. But I'm told that the air quality in Westbury is very, very poor. The air quality in Westbury is declining, even, with, even through the pandemic. With the reduced traffic, the air quality didn't actually get that much better, which suggests it's not all about road traffic. Mm. It's what's being pumped into the atmosphere. Mm. And the real worry, I don't know whether people saw, but the report from the Parliamentary Scientific Committee that's been published this morning, there's now, a, there's now a suggested link between air pollution and dementia, which would tie in that all of the times we know about times and how this is developed. So it's real. So why would anybody want to plant this monstrosity in the densest part of Wiltshire with the most populous part? It is absurd. Yeah. And I understand that houses, new houses being built, are enormous. The estates built, being built round Westbury are almost... Uh, the, the, tell me more well, about this. 
but Westbury, as you know, has suffered from great development, but we, we appreciate people have to have houses to live in, but we are still building houses fringing this plant. And if you look at some of the advanced applications, they're looking to build even nearer to the plant and around it. It's madness. It, you, you have to ask, why would we do this? Mm. Now, Wiltshire is not short of open spaces, but to dump this in the most densely populated part of the county doesn't make sense. And it, it's, it's an abomination. It, it, it really is. This is a first class. Thank you very much. on YouTube and um, this looks like we've come to the county town hall so what's going on okay, well today um, Wiltshire Council's strategic planning committee are going to make a recommendation as to whether to pass or um, um, ban the incinerator that's proposed for the town to be built on the edge of the town of Westbury and we are here to protest and show the feelings of the local community right so what's wrong with this incinerator? Don't we need incinerators? No, we certainly don't. It flies in the face of government policy to reduce landfill, to reduce waste sent to incineration. There is at the moment um, advice from DEFRA that came out only last week saying that this incineration um, stops people recycling and cuts the amount of um, goods that are sent to recycling. So it's absolutely not needed. There is overcapacity in the area for an incinerator. Um, this is, incinerator is not needed. It's not wanted. Okay. Now I've noticed in Westbury over the years the air quality seems to be declining rather than getting better. Even though the government are trying to uh, have local towns with a better quality of air. Do you agree with that? Or? Yes, it's absolutely the case. Yeah. Unfortunately, Westbury has one of the lowest air qualities in the area. Um, the incinerator will only make that situation worse, not only by the fumes and the um, emissions from the incinerator itself, but from the huge amount of extra traffic that it's going to bring to the town, bringing in thousands and thousands of tonnes of unwanted waste into our area. Come on, we need a better air quality. Well, we have tried that approach. Um, the Environment Agency, who you would think would be the people who would be responsible for that, have um, their hands are somewhat tied by legislation, providing that the technical emissions from the incinerator are below a certain level. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. Um, however, our firm belief is that, as with the case with the Hills Waste Plant at the moment, mm. which is putting out really unpleasant, noxious fumes, that they won't be meeting the required levels of um, output that are allowed and that they will be exceeding those. Thank you. Now, it's, it comes to terms that Hills are, are the, the main people here. Hills are collecting waste. Hills are burning waste. Do, where does Hills get their power from? Surely it's the local councils that give them contracts to do this. Um, that's absolutely the case, yes. Okay. Aren't you active. a local councillor? Yes, but unfortunately the Westbury Town Council does not have control over that. This is something that comes from Wiltshire Council. Wiltshire Council have the waste contracts, Wiltshire Council distribute the waste contracts, Wiltshire Council negotiate the waste contracts. Westbury Town Council's hands are tied, unfortunately. Oh, thank you for that. So you're a Westbury Town Councillor? I am. And your name is? And I'm Mark Bailey. OK, Mark, will you get my vote? Thank you. Thank you. In a right mind would allow an incinerator to be built next to a food factory. We're talking about 80, 90 metres distance between the two. On a still hot day, that stuff's going to go straight up and come straight back down again. It's going to poison us. Yeah. It's like Lafarge, really. Yes. I mean, the, you know, the, the Environment Agency said that they had uh, checking Lafarge regularly. But in fact, there was carcinomic stuff coming from Lafarge, we found out later. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm not knocking the environment agents. What I'm saying is we need to have people on the ball. Now, if you're going to build a building right a with a family in, right next to this incinerator, mm -hmm. we're in trouble. Yes, That family's are. in trouble. Yeah. We as taxpayers have to pay for the health of those children. 
going to the NHS. Our NHS, although not underfunded, doesn't seem to be working that well in Westbury, I'm afraid. No. But um, tell me more about Westbury. Tell me more about... I, I heard earlier that you were thinking about moving from Westbury yes. because... It of, will affect my health. It will affect your yeah. health. And you have a heart condition or what? No, I have pulmonary fibrosis and oh. COPD. Right. Which, which is incurable. Yeah. But that, that, this thing's not going to help one little bit. And um, I'm, I'm told that uh, the air quality in Westbury is very poor. It's a disgrace. Mm. It really is a disgrace. Mm -hmm. But and, everybody turns a blind eye. And you mentioned one of our uh, a government uh, people, Gove. What, what, what did Gove say? Well, Minister Gove told us that all planning should be done at a local level. Ah, uh -uh. thank you. Horse, Westbury YouTube station. Oh, wow. I didn't yes. know we had one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll give you a leaflet later. Anyway, we've had tens of thousands of people looking at our site. Wow. So, come on, tell me what you're doing here. <laughs> so, I'm here because I really do not agree with an incinerator being built in Westbury, which is a town where lots of people live, it's their home, and it will impact their health, basically. Okay. It will impact the health of the environment, just not the people, or not just the people. Yeah. But our surrounding beautiful countryside will be polluted, it means more traffic for the town. Um, it's there's nothing positive about it. Okay. Now, what I can't understand is this is an incinerator. This is an old-fashioned piece of kit. Why would an old-fashioned piece of kit want to be brought into a town with low air quality? So this old-fashioned piece of kit is going to spew out all sorts of carcinomic stuff. The Environment Agency were caught short with Lafarge. If you remember, Lafarge used to pour out um, all sorts of... And we were told it was steam, but actually it wasn't steam. Oh. There was other things within that steam. So we need to look at that again, I think. So what I'm saying is, do you trust the Environment Agency to take care of your health? No, not at all. I mean, how would they have given a, a, a permit to this incinerator to actually operate? Mm. They're not looking at the particles, that, the small particles that we know are what impact people's health, what cause asthma, heart disease, um, all kinds of illnesses which have those contaminants are a part of that. And unless the environmental agency are able to look at that, mm. they, it doesn't seem that they're fit for purpose. What you're doing, in fact, standing here at the moment, is trying to shed light to the younger generation who are going to have to breathe in this carcinomic air. And when they get their cancers and all the rest of it, um, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to find the money for them through the NHS to deal with this cancer and whatever else they have. Well, I think it's part of a, a, a whole need to change the systems that we have in place, which are no longer caring for people and planet. Yeah. But they're just caring for the people who have money and are making money. Right. I, th I think you're completely right. And what I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing the national coverage of this. I mean, we have a small channel and we put out as much information as we can on the channel. But so often you see the BBC and places like that not covering this sort of event. Well, I think it's just become part of the background noise, hasn't it? And the mainstream media aren't, it's not there, they don't report. I mean, you have to look at XR and the amount of actions that they do that don't get televised or the increasing. There are people everywhere who are trying to change the world for a better place that is fit for the future generations. Yeah. Thanks, Susie, for the interview. It's really kind of you to take the time away from the demo. And... Uh,
I was very pleased that you decided that the consultation launched on the 16th of March meant that you couldn't really make a determination at that point. And Chair, as you have pointed out, if it was material then, uh, then it is material now. And we are, in a sense, no further forward. And I just wonder how it's possible for you, uh, realistically, to make a determination, given that nothing much has changed. You rather optimistically felt, and perhaps all of us who operate with government tend to be optimistic, and our optimism is confounded, uh, that uh, we would have a decision uh, on this consultation, some output from the consultation by now. Well, that's not going to happen, but we do know that it's going to be published in draft form under a statutory instrument on the 31st of October, which I suspect the inspector will also find disobliging, but that remains the case. But the point is that these targets are material. I can tell you, because in the House of Commons you never ask a question to which you do not already know the answer. But when government publishes a consultation document with targets in it, it has a pretty clear idea of its general direction of travel. So I think we have a signpost, pretty clear one, for where government is going on this, and it is to reduce the number of incinerators. And that is as plain as a pipe stuff. Can I also mention traffic? Because the A350 isn't the A350 to my constituents living along Haynes Road and Warmest Road. It's Haynes Road and Warmest Road. Those people very often live in small Victorian terraced houses that empty directly onto the pavement. And frankly, it's not good enough to say, well, it's just another 78 HGB today. That's on a road that is already unfit for purpose and should have been bypassed well before now. It's a heck of a lot. And I put it to you that that's highly significant and is not to be dismissed. Can I also caution on modelling based upon a MET station in Lyman? Those of us who know Westbury know it's a very different sort of place uh, than Lyman. When I was representing Bradford on Avon, I recall of the very particular topography of that town, the canyon effect meant that uh, an air quality management area became inevitable there. Well, a similar sort of thing applies to Westbury. You only have to stand on a street corner at Westbury to appreciate the level of air pollution there. 78 HGVs is going to contribute big time to that. Now, Arla is due to speak, and I know we'll talk about taint. As I said in April, Arla is a signature Westbury operation, packs of butter with anchor butter with the Westbury white horse stamped on it. Make that very clear. It's a quality operation producing a quality product whose sector uh, affects agriculture throughout this country. And it will be an absolute disaster if Allah, now or in the future, decided it could no longer operate next door to a waste burner. Councillor Ewell made a point about food waste. Well, re re recently I had the pleasure of visiting a biodigester in Wiltshire, which is expanding, and where I learned that this operation takes food waste from all sorts of local authorities in the sub-region and region, except for, wait for it, Wiltshire. <laughs> I find that quite extraordinary. Yeah. I support the Environment Act 2021, and I certainly support the consultation that has fallen from it and was published on March the 16th this year. You made the right choice back in April. You did so for very good reason. The corollary of all of this is that we should have a moratorium or incinerating something I call for in the House of Commons. But I appreciate the government is within that space. And yet, it could be that the consultation leads us in that direction. But the consultation does make it very clear. It says uh, that 
increase in waste recycling and waste minimization is the way to go, rather than simply diverting waste from landfill to incineration with energy recovery. It's quite specific on the point of waste focus. Uh, that is to say, uh, energy from waste plants. So it's recycling and waste minimization that is the direction of travel, and there's no doubt that that is what will fall out of the transportation. And there are various ways of touching it, and Council of Rules point out that it's tiny and extremely well placed. I'd just like to say this. I was proud of this authority in April when it made the decision that it did. A few months on, we are no further forward. You are faced with the same dilemma. But if you made the decision that you did, then, based upon a material consideration, that material consideration still stands, and I suspect the appellant will wonder, if you were to make an adverse decision today, why did you make the decision that you did in April? And talk of litigation always surrounds these sorts of things, and I'm not a lawyer, I'm not qualified to make a legal opinion. However, I suspect that Helen will be rubbing his hands in glee because of the decision you made. You need to be consistent in your decision making. That means, in my view, making the right decision today, being supported in that view that I hope you will take by the overwhelming majority of people that we have the honour and privilege. Around the area, across the ground, they're going to get the full effect one of the 